Alright guys, so today I wanted to make a video um, about the website creation wiki. Um, I am working at some point on a um, series of videos explaining the taxonomical uh, classification of Lepidoptera. I'll be working on the actual um, videos for that in the coming days, weeks, and you know, a foreseeable time period in the future. Um, but what I wanted to do first was to kind of um, talk a little bit about how to evaluate some information and sources. I have been um, doing a little bit of reading on the internet about Luna moths, which is a species of Saturnid. I do a lot of work with, I rear them, I study them, and a variety of other things. And I came across the Creationist Wikipedia article for the Luna moth. Um, and I wanted to point out several things. I don't want to attack the people behind Creation Wiki. They have the right to their views, and they have the right to have this website up and say whatever the hell they want on it. Um, I am not at odds with that. It is their right to believe whatever they wish to. Um, but I wanted to just point out why we should not rely on this as a source of information about this animal or any of the other animals. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through and point out some of the things that I find um, untrue or problematic with this article and um, another article on the website. So why don't we start here, where it says Luna Moth of the header. Luna Moths are arguably the most beautiful moths in North America. Not too bad, um, a little bit subjective, however, you're allowed to start an article with that if you wish. They belong to the family Saturniidae, which includes the giant silkworm moths. This is also true. No issue there. Although I will say, um, the, the fact that you're saying the family of Saturn Day, you don't really have to say the giant silkworm moths afterwards. You can, but you don't have to. There are other species of insects in the Saturn Day besides giant silkworms, um, but that's a minor thing. The Luna moth is one of the most recognized moths. Um, if we're not counting butterflies in here, and butterflies technically are moths, um, sure, um, it is used commercially by the company Lunesta in television commercials. I would reword the structure of the sentence, but other than that, it's so far so good. It was even featured on a first-class postage stamp. Look how excited they are about that. Um, very lovely. Um, I'm aware of all this random Bible verse, um... Not really sure why that's in there, other than to push a creationist agenda. Um, let's go down here. Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Arthropoda, Class Insecta, Order Lepidoptera. And here's where we get to the first issue. Suborder Macrolepidoptera. Um, ma macro and Microlepidoptera are not formal taxonomic distinctions. Um, either these people didn't fact check or they are actually trying to deceive you or be dishonest. Um, this is a fairly minor point, however, um, if we want to rely on a source, something that has already been established and well-known should be correct on a website. Um, micro and macro lepidoptera are colloquial terms used to distinguish between the lepidopterans that we can reasonably perceive with the naked eye. Um, you know, most lepidopterans we're aware of are macroleps. And then the microleps would be things that are very, very small. You have to look very closely to find them. Things that are like gall formers, leaf miners, very, very tiny leps. Closed moths would technically be considered a microlep. Um, it's actually a really fuzzy distinction because people consider pterophorids to be um, microleps, even though some pterophorids, although they're um, bodies are very, very skinny, and their wings are very, very skinny. They're called plume moths because of how small their body is. Actually, let me pull up a picture of a plume moth for you. This is what a pterophore looks like. Um, these are technically considered microleps, even though some species can be well over an inch across, um, which I would not technically consider to be a microlep. Also, some of the tortricids are considered microleps, although there are plenty of very large tortricids as well. And if we want to say this is a suborder, you can't have um, something be part of a suborder, but then other members of the family or genus are then part of a different suborder. Um, that falls apart there. Um, Microlepidoptera is not a formal 
way of distinguishing between the different groups of Lepidopterans. When I talk about the way we classify Leps, I will get more into that. But micro and macro Lep are really subjective. They're obviously open to your interpretation, especially some of the species in the Geometridae and in the um, Tortricidae that some people may say, oh, that's really, really small. And other people may say, actually, I don't think it's obscenely small. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, these are the current um, accepted um, lower classifications in the Saturnidae, in the subfamily Saturninae, in the genus Actius. Um, the Luna should not be capitalized. Um, proper nomenclature dictates you have the species name lowercase. Um, this is something that if you really want to um, educate people on biology, you should know this. Um, these are people who are pushing creationist agenda, but they don't even have their grasp of basic biology down. Um, let's go on, though. All right, anatomy. Luna moths are known for their beautiful pale green wings and their tails. Um, I'm assuming they mean the tails and the wings. Every Luna moth also has four eye spots used to scare off predators. Um, my only issue with that is that there can be quite a bit of variation in those eye spots and in the pigmentation behind those eye spots. So you may have some Luna moths that lack the eye spots altogether or have them reduced. Um, but in general, they have the um, patterning for that, so fine. Um, on their head, they have feathery plumose antennae. They are especially prominent in males. Um, the lunar moth's wingspan tends to be between 4 and 5 inches. Sure. The front wings have maroon margins, and the hind wings have tails that can be up to 3 inches in length. Okay. Depending on where and when they were born, some have yellow forming margins instead of maroon. Um, do they mean the margins here or the margins here? Because this purplish color is always there. This can be differently pigmented. What I find when I rear them is that it doesn't really matter what time of year. Um, there's also a form called rubra marginata, which again is not a um, formal distinction or classification, but there are some Luna moths that have genes that never turn off for the um, red coloration along the wing margins. Um, you also find them on the hind wing margins. It's not just on the far wing margins. Um, again, it's still sort of a minor issue, although I would um, certainly, if I were writing this creationist or not, I would make sure that I was as accurate about some of those things as possible. Um, one of the things is if you want people to take you seriously, you have to be relatively accurate, factual, punctual, um, grammatically correct. All right. Let's see, where are we? The Luna Moth's body is white, contrasting sharply with the six maroon-colored legs. Mature Luna Moths don't have hearing organs. Can we get a fact check on this? I'm pretty sure... Because these are large nocturnal moths, they can actually hear. Um, I will look into that. I'm pretty sure the Saturnids do have hearing organs. Most of the um, flying Lepidopterans do. Um, and only have vestigial mouth parts that prevent them from eating. Sure. Um, they don't eat. Their mouths don't work. Um, I wouldn't really say it's preventing them from eating. That implies there's an active um, mechanism in place where it's more of a passive. They just lack the ability to eat. Um, again, that's just a minor grammatical thing. As caterpillars, Luna moths go through five different stages of molting. Well, it's really a period between molts, known as instars. They grow to be about three and a half inches it varies during the larval stages. The caterpillar remains green and has a yellow line down each side of its body with hair and spiny tubercles. Yes, um, these tubercles can be white, yellow, yes, very, a lot of variation in the species. The caterpillar also has various mouth parts that are used to chew mass quantities of food. All right, that's a little bit vague, but whatever. Behind the caterpillar's head are three pairs of true legs. Pro legs or false legs are attached in pairs to the remaining body segments. Um, not quite. The um, body has three thoracic three thoracic segments, 
then there are two abdominal segments that don't have prolegs, then you have four abdominal segments with prolegs, and then the final body segments don't have these prolegs, although the very last body segment has a pair of legs that are known as anoclaspers, although they are pretty much the same thing as prolegs. Um, we will talk later about the numbers of prolegs on different lap larvae. Um, as a pupa, the lunar moth looks like a dark brown egg spiraled to a tip at one end. Okay, that's just describing the appearance. Fine. All right. Reproduction. Adult lunar moths live only to reproduce. Um, ultimately, yes. They do live um, to produce offspring. They also have to avoid predation in the process and find food for their eggs. I suppose that is part of a um, reproductive capacity. Because their lifespan is a mere week, not entirely true, um, they usually live 13 to 17 days as adults, depending mostly on temperature and sex of the individual, lay eggs shortly after mating and emerging from their cocoons. Females release pheromones to attract mates. Pheromones are specific chemical messengers that affect the behavior of development. Um, yeah, we're... Let me just say, pheromones are classified under a couple of different groups. Um, some of them are priming pheromones that get an animal ready to act a certain way, and some of them actually get the animal to act in a specific way. Um, we don't really have to get into this. Basically, Luna moths communicate by releasing pheromones to attract mates, and the female attracts the male. Um, just keep in mind that pheromones in other animal species have other functions besides this. Um, we can get into that later. Female will usually mate with the first male that reaches her. Yep. <laughs> Once the male has found the female, they may remaining in a position until the next evening. Um, not entirely true. With Luna moths, I find that they are generally paired from about 1 to 3 in the morning until just before noon. I very seldom see Luna moths, even if I don't touch them all day, may past noon, although there are some exceptions to this. I've also had instances where I've left females out, never witnessed a mating, even if I was um, up every hour or two checking on her, and she eventually laid eggs that hatched, even though I had never seen a mating occur. Um, I just wanted to point that out. They should um, at least say, generally this is what happens. Once the pair separates, the female looks for a host plant in which to lay her eggs. Um, yeah, I'll give them that. It's a little more complex than that. This plant will be the one caterpillars eat once they hatch. All position lasts for several nights. They lay between 150 to 250 eggs. The eggs hatch roughly 8 to 13 days later. Sure. They can be laid singly or in small clusters. Depending upon the area, there could be anywhere from 1 to 3 generations of loon moths per year. Um, it's a little bit more complex than that. You do sometimes have partial broods where a portion of the larvae that hatch out at any given time will enter diapauses, they develop, and some of them will directly develop and emerge the same year. Um, there are areas around the Gulf states where these guys are found where you have flights every month or every two months without any appreciable diapause during any generation. Um, but it's good that they're pointing out that there are different, um, times. All right. Let's go into the ecology section. Luna moths do all of their feeding as caterpillars. Yes, a lot of moths do this um, on a variety of plants. These include pignut hickory, winged sumac, probably other sumacs and hickories, sweet gum, persimmon, birch, walnut, and many more. Okay, sure. Because their diet consists mainly of leaves, they are known as folivores, which is a special classification of herbivores. Yep, that's true. They inhabit deciduous hardwood forests. Um, just a heads up, deciduous is the same thing as hardwood. Hardwood generally is a logger's term when people are trying to get a specific type of wood. They refer to deciduous trees as hardwood and coniferous trees as softwood. Um, although you can have, um, some conifers that have deciduous leaves. Um, I don't think both wording is necessary, but whatever. Um, they are commonly found throughout the east coast of the United States from eastern North Dakota and Texas to the Atlantic. They live as far south as the Gulf Coast and central Florida and as far north as Maine. Sure. Um, lunar moths are subject to 
predation at every stage in their lives. Okay, great. Um, so is pretty much every other animal, as caterpillars and moths are prey to parasitic insects from these different families. Um, yep, um... Uh, Linamaws are hunted by the bald-faced hornet, fire researcher, big brown bat. Um, my question is, what life cycle stage? Because I see hornets and other vespid wasps attack larvae. Um, some of these other animals would probably attack the adult or the cocoon. Um, for a defense, Linamoth caterpillars take advantage of the green camouflage coloring. Sure. If threatened, they take a sphinx pose. Um... They can regurgitate distasteful fluids and make a clicking sound. Yep, they do that. Um, they use their wings for defense as adults. Um, Luna moths are nocturnal and rarely seen during the daytime. Yeah, I'll give them that. Um, they're extremely attracted to light, especially UV wavelengths. Uh-huh. Uh, this is why I've seen at night they are usually fluttering around some kind of light. Yeah, sure. Um... Uh, I guess that's correct. There are a few um, issues with that. The lunar moth life cycle centers around a process called complete metamorphosis. Yes, um, that's fine. This is what a lot of things do. There's really not too much else here that I have any issues with. Um, except, let's see. Male and female pupa can be told apart by... Two longitudinal notches. Males lack these. Well, males have a single one, but it's more of um, a large cluster with a split down the middle rather than um, a line, and it's a little bit different in appearance. You can also see the um, difference in the antennal thickness, but you need to usually compare those two. Um, Yep, that's fine. Metamorphosis takes about two to three weeks, unless it's in diapause. They don't mention that. I would have... Um, if the caterpillar spends its cocoon before winter, it will wait until spring. Okay, sure. Um, they escape through a hole. Um, they really should state that the moth makes that hole. It's just as they emerge from a hole. Um, the other thing, uh, from this article that I wanted to just quickly point out, they say this is a damaged lunar moth that fell from a tree while in its cocoon. Um, one, it looks like the moth had just emerged and is trying to expand its wings. It still has that yellow coloration to it. Um, it's probably not damaged. It's probably just still trying to expand its wings. Um, again, very poor use of nomenclature. Um, usually the cocoons fall from the trees, especially if it's fall and they're in the leaves. They don't, um, attach their cocoons to the branches or any permanent part of the tree that's not part of their biology. So they always fall from the tree. That very rarely harms them, however. Um, I just wanted to point that out. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the um, actual article for the Lepidoptera. Um, there were a couple of things that I wanted to point out from this. Um, first of all, um, these are all the names of superfamilies. Um, it doesn't look like the superfamilies are totally off. However, these are superfamilies, not families. Um, I don't think Hesperoidea is its own family right now, although it could be. I'll double check on that later. Um, but you really wanted to list... Um, I will also mention they don't need to separate butterflies and moths. People generally group them together when they're talking about the taxonomy of Lepidoptera because butterflies are moths. Um, but... Uh, that's what you can see there. Um, I love how they don't even mention what species that is. Um, Lepidoptera is a taxonomic order of insects that includes both the moths and butterflies. Sure. They are known as the beauties of the class Insecta. Who the hell even came up with that? One of God's most beautiful creations. Okay. They are marvelous in the way that they look, communicate, and reproduce. How? Let's be objective here. They're is something about them that we do find appealing, but when we're just talking about what they're up to, we don't need all of this, ooh, it's so cool, pretty, blah, blah. Um, their metamorphosis from a pupa is one of the most memorable characteristics and sets them apart from other insects. 
Um, no, actually, most insects, and the reason I say most insects is because beetles do this and they constitute about 90% of known insects, do this. Um, this is called complete metamorphosis, and um, a lot of insects, Lepidoptera, Coleoptera, Diptera, um, Hymenoptera, these are the four most speciose insect orders, they do this. Um, so yeah, the majority of insects have a pupal stage. Um, it's subjects of body design, life, cycle ecology, and the comparison are only a few categories that describe the complexity of their way of life. Oh, geez. Um, then there's stuff, God is present in nature. Um, I would like to see proof of that. Um, Order Lepidoptera's body design is extremely unique and outstanding. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is hurting my brain now. Um, there was one other thing in here that said that butterflies are known to be more colorful than moths, and moths are generally drab. Again, moths and butterflies are synonymous. Basically, a butterfly is a kind of moth. Uh, so let me just show you something quickly. Oh, come on, love. Um, these are moths, and they're very vibrantly colored, in case people wanted to know. And then, this is a butterfly species that is very drab in color. So, you know, if you're reading something about some of these animals, make sure it's a reliable source. Read multiple resources about something to see if you can get a consensus or get useful information. Um, that's all for now. I will at some point start a video for um, the taxonomic classification of the Lepidoptera. I just wanted to point out that we can't really rely on Creation Wiki for good information. They parrot stuff that's already been established on other articles and then add a couple of things that are not accurate. Um, peace out for now, peeps.